Today we're going to jump into Lightroom. We're going to talk about adding light to your photos. We're going to go through two different ways that you can do it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now, like I said in the intro, we're going to dive into Lightroom and we're going to talk about two ways that you can add light to your photos. Now, this isn't some, you know, random tip that you might use once a year. This is something I use in an enormous amount of my photos. I use it in portraits, I use it in landscapes, I use it in street photography, all kinds of stuff. There's a couple of different ways that I do it, but it is a huge thing for me in Lightroom to add kind of an extra element to the photo and really, in some cases, accentuate natural light. And in other cases, just paint in a bit of light in the way that I feel it should be in there. We're not going to go too crazy with it, but it can make a nice big difference to your photo. Let's dive in. I've got a couple of photos we're going to work with. First up, we've got a photo that I took with the Canon R5C. This is down at New Haven, and we've got these lovely waves smashing against the seawall. Really dramatic. To be honest, I love it down there. It's a great place to go and take photos. Now, I'm going to talk to you about two ways that we can add light. We're going to do the first way on this photo. We're going to use another photo for the second way. So first up, Where's the light coming from in this photo? Well, it's coming from the top right. It's coming over to our right. There's the sun. It's obviously a little bit higher in the sky, but we've obviously got directional light. You can see shadows on the left here, shadows on the left of these rocks and highlights on the right. So we've got light coming in from the right. Great. But we might want to accentuate that in the photo. And there's a really easy way we can do that. We're going to come up here to masking. We're going to click this. Let's go create new mask. And we're going to use the linear gradient for this one. Now, that probably makes a lot of sense, actually. We're going to drag that in a little bit like this, and you can see all the red is where the mask is. So you can probably work out what we're doing here. You know, we might go in and bump up the exposure a little bit. And just doing that, we've already created the kind of perception of light coming in from the right. If I turn that off and turn that back on, we've got brightness coming in from the right. We could even bump that up further if we wanted to but I'm going to leave it at 0.33. Now, that's great, and that's how I used to do things, but there's more that we can do to this to make it feel like actual light, and we can even play around with color temperature. So the next thing I would do is actually come down to dehaze, bring that down a little bit. Now, if I do that quite a bit, you can see it really ups the, uh, or, or rather lowers the contrast in such a way that it creates uh, a feeling of kind of mist or light or sunlight coming in from the right, which is great. Now, I wouldn't bring the dehaze down this much, but certainly down to something like minus 10 just really helps to sell the daylight, the sunlight part of this. Now, we might also want to warm this light a little bit, so we can just come up to the color temperature and just add a little bit. Now, the key with all of this, as it is generally with the photo editing, is to try and be a little bit subtle about it, not to go too mad with adding this in because if we do it too much it's going to look completely over the top it's going to look completely crazy and it's not going to be believable in any way we're not trying to do some dramatic photo manipulation we're just trying to accentuate what's already there so i might even have worn that a little bit much but if i now turn this mask off look how much difference it's now making we've got the exposure we've got dehaze and then we've warmed it a little bit as well so off and on and look at how much difference that is actually making. I might then go in and you can see I've already actually done it here and paint on some light here as well just to really bring out the highlighted areas and things like on this lighthouse the right hand side here I might want to paint on some light to really accentuate that sunlight. Now I've already gone ahead and done this mask four I've got here if I turn that off you can see I've made a bit of a difference I've painted in a bit of the clouds I've painted in on the lighthouse, and you can actually see that. I did this in a video. I edited this photo in a video uh, where we've got a full editing workflow. So you can see exactly what I did there. But if I turn it back on, off and on, off, on, you can see it makes quite a big difference. Now, all I've done there is I've actually just used the brush. See, I can just paint on here. I can just paint on anywhere I like. Control Z to undo. And all I've done is I painted on light. So again, a bit of exposure. This time I haven't used the dehaze, but if I was to bring that down a touch, we would add kind of a bit of a, a misty kind of light to it. And I've just painted on areas that I felt should have a little bit more of a highlight. So some of these waves, just to bring out the white, 
some areas around the rocks, the side of this lighthouse where the light will be hitting it, some areas in the wall, even some areas in the clouds. So if I turn this actual mask off again, and then back on, you can see how much of a difference that that is making. So that's one way to immediately add quite a lot to your photo and really give the feel of that sunlight. So if I turn both those masks off for a second, you know, we've still got light coming in from the right and that's great, but it doesn't feel as kind of part of the photo as it does with those masks on. You know, it doesn't feel as strong. It doesn't feel as much a dynamic part of this photo as it does when we've added these masks in. So I really, really like working this way. Let's go to another photo. I'm gonna show you how we can add in light, but in a slightly different way. So we've got this photo here. Now I've used this for other things in the past, so you may have already seen this photo, but this is a photo I took back in autumn of 2020, actually, so a little while ago. Uh, but I really like it. I really like the feel down this path and you know the colors are really nice. I have obviously played around a little bit with this already with the colors and things like that, but we can add light to this. Now I've already actually edited light in in this photo. I'm going to turn that off so you can see what a difference it makes. If I turn off the linear gradient mask, so exactly what we did in the last photo, I can turn that off here. You can see how much of a difference that makes. Turn it back on. But how much of a difference? Let's turn it off for now. And Let's have a look at what we're going to look at in this photo, which is kind of individual shafts of light. Let's turn it off and you can see if I turn it back on, you can see what a difference that makes. Now, this is where we want to add light in in a different way to how we did before. Before we did a big linear gradient and it essentially is sweeping sunlight coming in from one side. Great. But sometimes we might want to add in some slightly more deliberate light, which is coming through in shafts or it's breaking through different areas and in this situation it would be coming through the trees so it'd be coming through gaps in the trees so it wouldn't be one big gradient although of course i've added that as well but it would be these individual shafts of light so let's turn that off and let's go ahead and add these in let's actually create a new mask and what i'm going to do is click brush here i'm going to up the exposure a little bit let's go to something like 0.38 is fine. We can always adjust this later as well. Let's bring the dehaze down. So a little bit exactly like we did uh, in the last photo. We're using exposure and the negative dehaze, which basically adds haze to add this light in. So we're going to go ahead and just paint this in. Now, I like to do this with a reasonably low flow. So I'm going to go for something like 35 because that allows us to build up our kind of painting. We can paint on once and then we can paint it again to strengthen it up. But we're not working so much with just a 100% opacity uh, paint. So let's go ahead and paint this in. Now, what we want to do is find the direction it's coming from. Of course, again, it's coming from the right in this photo. And we want to find the gaps where it might be coming through. Now, we can do that by looking, okay, where does the light fall on the ground? No worries. We can just follow that from some of these areas here. So we can start here. Let's just paint that in like this. Let's go again and again and again. And again, if I press O, you can see where the red is, is where I've painted this in. Now we might want to go ahead and do a slightly smaller brush. We can change that with the mouse scroll wheel. Let's just paint this in like so. And let's press O to get rid of that. Let's turn this off. So it's not making a huge difference right now. But let's up the exposure a bit, see what happens. And let's bring that dehaze down a little bit. Now, if we turn that mask off, you can see that is making quite a big difference. Now, well, I say a big difference, it's not really making a big difference. That's actually the point. You don't want it to be too over the top. You don't want it to be too noticeable because that's when it looks really, really fake. You really just want to accentuate what's already there. That's the easiest way to do this. So let's turn it back off and back on. You can see this is pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this. We might even bring that dehaze down a little bit if we want to, or the exposure up. But I think that's looking pretty good. We might want to shape it a little bit by, we can hold Alt and we can actually uh, just get rid of some of this. So Alt allows us to use the brush as a, an eraser. So we can actually remove areas. Now the easiest way to do that is to press O so we can see exactly where this is. Let's go ahead and, uh, and just remove this from some areas. Let's make it a little bit more of a, of a tighter selection. So we've got kind of shafts of light. We don't want to have it in these darker areas over here. So let's have a look at that. Let's press O. Now let's turn that off and back on, off and on. Lovely. That's making enough of a difference, I think. 
and I really, really like it. Now, we could always warm that a little bit as well. We could probably warm it quite a bit if we wanted to. It's not, not being too kind of destructive to the photo. Now, let's go ahead and add in the actual linear gradient as well. So let's click Create New Mask. Let's go Linear Gradient. Let's bring that down from the top right, like so. Let's bring the exposure up. Let's warm it up. And let's bring Dehaze down a little bit. Now, what I might want to do with this is actually alter where this mask is. So let's press O. So you can see the mask are coming in directly from the top right. I might want to just move this up a little bit. I don't want it to be quite so all encompassing of the photo. And I might want to just click on mask eight here and subtract with a brush. Now that allows me to just remove some of this from some of these areas up here where I might not want it. Now I'm using a nice low flow, 35. Let's bring that up to about 50 and just paint this out of some of these bits of the trees that I feel are a little bit darker and they may not have so much of the sunlight coming in. So I think we've done a pretty good job there. Let's press O. Let's turn this off and back on. I think that looks pretty good. We might want to reduce how much we've subtracted, but I like that we've darkened up this tree a little bit. Maybe we want to just warm it a little bit as well. So you can see there we've added in light actually as a whole sunlight coming in, which is brightening up the trees and that would filter through the leaves and brighten everything up. And then we've got these shafts of light just coming in from the side there. So that's two ways that I like to add light to my photos. Now I do this, like I say, for all kinds of different photos. They can work really well for portraits, landscapes, absolutely. You wanna find where your light source is and maybe bring in that linear gradient. You might wanna paint on some light too, like we did with the lighthouse, paint on that side of the lighthouse, just paint on some extra exposure, just to brighten that up, to make it feel like the light is really hitting that and making it pop. Now, let me know, do you love Lightroom and Photoshop tutorials, bit of Capture One maybe, or do you like the practical tutorials that we do? Let me know down in the comments because I'd absolutely love to make the stuff you wanna see. Look out for some new stuff coming as well. I know some of you have suggested a few different videos. Well, let me tell you, we're listening. We're absolutely listening. I read every single one of the comments that comes in and I can assure you, a lot of those suggestions are in the works. They're on the list. So watch out for some new stuff coming soon. Of course, like I say, anything you want to see in particular, let me know down in the comments. There's a full list of all the kit used for this video and of course these photos in the description so you can go check that out for yourself as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. New stuff coming all the time. All that's left for me to say is I will see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.